2 Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 10. 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 10 says, But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. I want to read that again because I want you to let these things sit down in your ears. Again in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 10, he said, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Amen. 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 Praise God. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for another opportunity to come before you. We thank you for allowing us to partake of this brand new morning which you have ordained and we ask that you would help us to understand the hour in which we live that we might make ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ may we take advantage of the time you have allotted us and use it for the benefit of setting our house in order. In Jesus' name, we bless you. Amen. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 10, again, when we look at this text, he talks about them that walk after the flesh. And I want you to know that he is addressing them that are a part of the New Testament church. Because when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, don't get comfortable. Because if you're not careful, you can come to a place where you begin to yield to the flesh. And you begin to do things and say things that are abominable. Amen. 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 Yes, I'm talking about even after having the glorious experience of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is why the apostle is ordained from heaven to bring this out. He said, but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Now we understand that in the house of God there is a government. There is a five-fold ministry. Praise God. And we live in a day now where the government of God has been despised. I'm not talking about the false apostle or the false prophet. I'm not talking about the crooked evangelist or the pitiful pastor. I'm not talking about the tenacious teacher that do not represent the kingdom of God. I'm talking about true men of God who hold to the standard of righteousness and holiness. Amen. Amen. This is what I'm referring to concerning the government of God that has been established by Jesus himself. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11, before Jesus ascended up on high, the scripture says how he gave gifts unto men. Amen? Amen? And the text says he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers 
for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, these whom Jesus gave to be a part of the ecclesiastical leadership within the New Testament church, these are true men of God. Amen. Hallelujah. But it's a tragedy when we get them in the house of prayer that become so unduly bold, they are not afraid to speak evil against dignity. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Amen. Now the world is doing it enough. I know the world talks about what goes on within the Christian church, but what the world don't understand is that everybody that attends a, 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 a house of prayer, everyone that professes the name Jesus Christ, are not really true disciples of his. So therefore, when they look at somebody that calls themselves a Christian, but yet they are living a wicked lifestyle, they associate them that is a part of the church, and yet then they call them hypocrites. Well, they really ain't hypocrites. They're just sinners that have been planted in the house of God to give the Christian church a bad name. Amen. Amen. So when the world looks at the church, they'll say, look at them hypocrites. Now we know there are some hypocrites that are in the Christian church. I'm talking about them that are, that are born again, but yet they are living a double life. Amen. But then again, we have some within the Christian church that have never been born again, yet they profess that they are Christian, and they do all kinds of things, and Satan uses that to smear the image of the house of God. Are you listening to me? So what the world does is they lump it all in together. Amen. But it's sad when we got them that have been born again begin to yield to the flesh. And they become so unduly bold, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. They begin to despise government in the house of God. Are you listening to me? Praise his holy name. The text says here in verse 10, chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Amen. Remember what the prophet said in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 when it begins to give a revelation concerning Jesus Christ. He said, the government shall be upon his shoulders. And he shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Amen? Hallelujah. And when you begin to speak against the government of God within the Christian church, then you are also attacking the head of the church, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Presumptuous are they. Look at that. The word presumptuous means arrogant. Another definition for the word presumptuous is unduly bold. In other words, one who is unduly bold is devilish. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Now, everybody ain't holy bold, but we have a lot of unduly bold people in the house of God. They have yielded to the flesh, and they are acting out of the flesh. Hello, somebody. So we have to understand there is an order in the house of God. There is a protocol in the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And when you get in the flesh, you will break the protocol. You will go against the government of God that he has established within the New Testament church. Listen to the text here. He said, presumptuous are they. Then he goes on to say, self-willed. Well, we see a lot 
today. Many that want to do what they want to do. They don't want nobody correcting them. They don't want nobody telling them they're wrong. They don't want nobody to tell them how to do this and how to do that. They don't want nobody telling them how to pray according to what is written in Scripture. Many want to do how they want to do it and they will uh, uh, go on uh, uh, and attack against the one In Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number 25, he said, There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. When the text brings it out, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man. That's somebody that is self-willed because they think that their way is right too. How many know there can't be two rights and they are in conflict with one another? Amen. 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 Are there two ways of doing right when they are contrary one to the other? Even the apostle said in Galatians chapter 5, the spirit is against the flesh and the flesh is against the spirit and these are contrary one to the other. Come on, somebody. So there is no two right ways of doing something, and yet they are in conflict to one another. But this is what the text is bringing out. Because you see this spirit in the house of God. Many self-willed people. They're not led by the Holy Ghost. They don't even pray in fast and ask God for direction. Shoot. 
useless. They'll get arrogant about it. Amen? They'll become unduly bold. They don't want you saying nothing about what they do. Because they figure that their way is right too. When there's only one right. There's only one truth. There's only one way to do things that are pleasing unto God. Are you listening to me? Praise his holy name. Back at our foundational text in 2 Peter chapter 2, the text goes on to teach us in verse 10. He says again, presumptuous are they self-willed. Look at that. Now that, that, that's something we can spend a lot of time on. Because it is prophesied in the last days many shall depart from the faith. In other words, they would no longer be led by the Spirit. They would resist the Holy Ghost and yield to the flesh and will feel justified in doing so. Amen? Amen. Are you listening to me? What did he say in the text? He said they would become presumptuous and self-willed. Amen? Amen? Now we understand that when a person gets like that, they are no longer following Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because if you're going to follow Jesus Christ, you have to take up your cross. And you to never throw it down. Amen. You are to take up your cross and you are to deny yourself and come after him. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You'll find out many have thrown down the cross. And then there's others that have never picked up their cross. And that's why they have never followed him. They attended the house of prayer, but they have never begun their journey in following the Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So don't ever get excited just because somebody comes to the house of God. Yes, we are elated that you are here, but don't get all excited because if that person is going to follow Jesus, they got to take up their cross, they got to deny themselves and come after him. Because until they do so, their journey has never begun. People like that are comfortable living after the flesh. And they think because they named the name Jesus Christ that they can hide and pretend to be something that they're not. God's people must understand we are called to be selfless people. And if you're going to be selfless, you got to take up that cross. You got to deny yourself. Hello, somebody. You got to pop the But you have to do what is next. 
always lusting. And they must be put to death. They must be eradicated. Because if not, look at the things that will come out of your mouth. You have no understanding that you are operating in the flesh. Look at all the guys coming out your mouth. The bitter water coming out your mouth. Amen. The back talk coming out your mouth. The lies coming out your mouth. Come on, I don't care what evil speaking proceeds out of your mouth. Have you no understanding that you have yielded to the flesh and you have become self-will? Not only are you self-will, but the scripture says presumptuous are they. You become arrogant. Again, the word unduly means, or a synonymous word for unduly, I should say, is devilishly. Amen. Amen. And we don't even think about these things because our mind is gone. Our mind is gone. It still lives in the realm of carnality. Look at this. In Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Glory to God. The scripture begins in verse number 5. It says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Who is he addressing in the text? He's talking to the saints. Now I have ministered on several occasions that when you are born again, you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You have a new heart. Amen. Your name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And even though God has blessed you by sending Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, to pay the penalty of our transgressions. Your mind is still carnal. And that's why he told us in Romans chapter 12, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Who is the apostle talking to in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2? He's talking to the saints. He's talking to them that have been born again. Amen. He brings this out among the Gentile believers. Amen. Amen. So we must know that when you are born again, your mind is still carnal. And it has to get in the process of being transformed into a spiritual mind as Christ had when he was here in the flesh. Come on. But you know, we have a lot of people that just remain in this state. I'm talking about them that are part of the Holy Ghost New Testament church. They remain comfortable having a carnal mind. And listen what the apostle says about that. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. This is why a lot of people in the Christian church don't think the way they should. This is why their behavior is not up to par. It's because they have a carnal mind. It doesn't matter because you sit in the house of prayer and you hear the word preached over and over and over. Your mind will remain carnal until that word begin to get in your heart. Until it begin to take root in your mind. And your behavior begin to change. And your conversation begin to change. Until then, you are still carnal. Amen. It doesn't matter because you can quote a thousand scriptures. If your behavior has never changed, if your ways have not changed, if your conversation has not changed, if your attitude has not changed, you are still carnal mind while you speaking in tongue. 
Come. Are you listening to me? He says because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the saints of God. Gentile believers that were in Rome. Come on somebody. You got to get this. Amen. And when you are carnal minded. Amen. You may have the Holy Ghost. You may speak in tongues. God may even move you. In, in one of the nine gifts of the spirit. You're going to do it. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, that's what is he. Hallelujah. Yeah. That's why the mindset got to change. Arm yourself with the same mind. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Again, he said, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So it's important that the children of God refrain from yielding to the flesh. And this is just one reason why the mind must be renewed. And that's why teaching is so important. Studying the word of God is so important. Amen. We have been blessed to have a Bible to just let it sit up and rot. Amen. We have been blessed to attend the house of prayer, to hear the preach word, to just cast it behind our back and let it fall to the ground. Amen. Amen. Look at what God has done for us. And we don't even take advantage of it. We just miss the opportunity and then after we have missed the opportunity, now we want to in the home, in the house of prayer. And the reason why is because they really don't honor God as a father. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And that goes for men and women. Are you listening? Come on tonight. That goes for men and women. Because he's addressing the New Testament church. He's not talking to women in this text. He's not talking to men in this text. He's not talking to them as being individual groups. He's talking to the whole house. Come and preferably them that are violating the law of God. Amen. Selfless. Amen. This is why we are to always walk in humility. Listen to what he says about that. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Let's start at verse 1. Praise God. He said, if there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind. That's humility. 
Manage, esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. See that? Come on. He said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind was in Christ Jesus? He said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each of see others better than themselves. See that? Amen. See, this is, this is how you would live when you walk in humility. Because you will always look on the things of others. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He said, let each esteem others better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. See that? Why does he want us to live like this? Because he's teaching you to be selfless. This is how Jesus lived. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let's go on. In the Gospel of Matthew, well, let me let me stop and let's go. Let me go to another uh, scripture in Romans chapter fifteen, verses one. Romans chapter fifteen. I'll come back to the Gospel of Matthew, but in Romans chapter fifteen, beginning in verse one, listen to the text. It reads, we then that are strong are to bear the infirmities of the weak. See that? And not to please ourselves. See that? Yeah. He's always teaching us that we are to be like Jesus. Because he was selfless. Amen. Are you seeing this is the text. Was the apostle moved by the Holy Ghost to minister to the saints of God? And when you receive the love of the truth, your life should be conformed into his image. This should become a part of our lifestyle. And that's only predicated if you humble yourself and receive the love of the truth. When you reject it, you will become just the opposite. That's why a lot of people's lives are not changing. They are rejecting the words of God. They are resisting the Holy Ghost and they are not being conformed to the image of Christ. They are living contrary to his person. Amen. Praise God. Then he says in verse 2, that every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproach of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Praise God. Now, my prayer is that you understand what the Holy Ghost is ministering through the apostles from the text that we have given you. Amen. 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 What is Jesus teaching us? To be selfless. Amen. Amen. He's teaching us to be selfless. And that never happens if you don't humble your heart. Amen. That never happens until you receive the love because it's the word of God that's going to conform us into his image. You can't do that on your own. I don't care how hard you try. Amen. If the word of God has not been deposited within your heart, if the Holy Ghost has not taken that word and begin to conform you where you and I begin to look like Christ, behave like Christ, talk Still the same. Amen. Yeah. Going to the house. 
We can go back to the we can go back to the Old Testament when David, even though he had been chosen to be the next king over God's inheritance, Saul had become enraged with him. Oh, many times Saul tried to kill him. Threw javelins at him. He, his heart was filled with envy and strife. He knew his days was numbered because the prophet Samuel told him, God has rigged the kingdom from you and he's given it to a neighbor that is better than you. And even after the prophet has spoken this over his life, and pronounce God's judgment God still let him sit on the throne and rule his king but yet in the background he was preparing David who he had already ordained to be the captive of his inheritance amen and even Saul who became enraged with David and sought to kill him praise God you know what happened you never see David rose up against Saul. On several occasions, David could have killed Saul while he was sleeping. But he refused. You know why? He said he's the Lord's anointed. He let God take care of him. But you know how we are today? We speak evil of dignity. We have no respect for authority. We deal with a bunch of fleshly people in the house of God. Amen. And I know we have a lot of men in the pulpit that are corrupt. But it ain't everybody. If there are some men of God that were doing good. Amen. But fell off their rocker. Are you listening to me? Yes, they were men of God. They were Christ loved us. Amen. 
Right? Amen. And if we love one another, love works no ill to its neighbor. Amen. So you can't get with your sister and your brother and get to talking about this person. Amen. Amen. You need to begin to pray for them. And if there's no hope for them, then God will take it. Don't pray for them. They have went past the point of no return. That's what he told Jeremiah on behalf of many that were of the house of Judah. On three to four different occasions, Jeremiah began to seek the Lord in prayer and fasting concerning many that were in the house of Judah. Praise God, many of them fell into idolatry. They was uh, uh, rebuked for it. God showed mercy to them on many occasions. Praise God. He sent the prophet to cry out, to spare not, to lift up his voice like a trumpet and show the people their transgressions and their sins. And time in and time again, they continue to reject the call. They rejected the God of their salvation. And you know what happened? God rejected them. And he told the prophet Jeremiah, stop praying for them, for I will not hear you on their behalf. You know why? Because he had rejected them. They had been turned over to reprobation. You can find that in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 to 19, and verse number 30. 